Today's class is going to deal with circulation at special organ beds. We have local and systemic influences on blood flow. Let's take a look at the different organs and what influences their flow. We've seen the coronary system before. The local control is incredibly important to flow. Vasodilators like adenosine and hypoxia can increase delivery of oxygen to tissues. The brain is quite similar and that local factors dictate the flow, but here the most important mediator of flow is the CO2 level. You will learn more about this mechanism when discussing acid-base disturbances. You've covered some aspects of skeletal muscle before, and later we will dive into the systemic circulation that happens during exercise. Circulation to our muscles is quite important, but we want to control this flow. Again, hypoxia is going to exert regional control during times of exercise, along with lactate and potassium levels. The epinephrine circulates and binds to beta-2 receptors to produce vasodilation. However, we see the nervous system kick in and regulate its flow during non-exercising times. We lose the circulating epinephrine and its beta-2 effect, which decreases the blood flow to the muscle tissues. On the same spectrum as exercising, the skin is an interesting tissue bed. It is heavily innervated by the sympathetic nervous system and controls temperature regulation. Other beds, like the liver, have a completely unique role in circulation. The liver receives a dual blood supply, but each supply has its own function. It receives oxygenated blood to supply the hepatocytes via the hepatic artery, but it also receives deoxygenated blood from the portal vein. This flow has entered the liver after passing through the GI capillary beds for processing. The liver, like the lungs, are subject to problems with cardiac insufficiency. If the right side of the heart fails to pump, then the venous blood can pull in the venous system. The liver dumps blood into the IVC directly below the heart and can become congested if too much backflow is present. Additionally, since the liver is a flow-through system involving both portal and systemic circulation, if the external tissues of the liver are scoured down, then the system can be impeded. This backs up the blood, causing portal hypertension. When blood backs up, it has to find a new, low-pressure system to flow through. There are venous anastomoses between the portal and systemic system that allow us to divert this backed up blood. You reviewed this in anatomy, but this gives us a chance to review now. There are three classic locations for blood to back up. The inferior rectal vessels in the form of hemorrhoids, superior epigastric vessels over the umbilicus, giving the caput medusa sign, and the lower esophagus in the form of varices from the left gastric veins. It will be important throughout school to not only focus on your day-to-day -day coursework, but to make connections with previous classes, integrating the knowledge in a clinical context. Thank you for watching and good luck with your studies.